Hi Virgo, welcome to your June 2021 Love and General Reading. I am Gemstone Tarot. You are Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Cross Watchers. If you're here, you're probably meant to be here. Okay, we're in the kitchen today, which is not normal, but we have some very loud construction work going on. Not in this house, person across the road. So uh, here we are. Okay, Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. There will be, as ever, an extended reading to this. So if it resonates, the link will be in the description box below. And in the extended reading, we have a look at the YouTube reading and clarify cards. Use love oracles and see how they feel about you, what's going on with the situation, and anything that we need to kind of dig around at. Ooh, Virgo, you've got a lot of cups. Wow. Okay, nice. Overall energy card, Virgo, you've got the Knight of Cups. Now, there's not a lot wrong with this card. There's not a lot bad you can even say about it. <clears throat> and why would you want to? This, this knight has come along and he's got a beautiful horse and he's got all geared up. He's got his armor on, he's got his plumage, he's got his cup and he's offering something. Can't knock someone who's offering something, Virgo. This is usually to do with the realms of emotions. It's Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio vibe. It's cups and water, subconscious and feelings. Okay, so, Mercury is retrograde for most of June, and I think for nearly all the signs that I have read for, there has been some element of something building either from the past or from something that is kind of already familiar. What interests me here is that you also have the Page of Cups. Now the Page of Cups is equally nice, you know, it's always good to get the Page of Cups. It's an offer, we know this. But the thing with the Page of Cups is that as a tarot reader, when I see it, I'm kind of hoping that it will turn into the night. You know, I'm hoping that the guy who's got a bit of a smelly fish in a cup and he's doing his best and he's like, hi, I've got a smelly fish in a cup, will get it together to kind of get a horse, you know, work himself out, and upgrade to something decent. It's like emotional maturity. So something's coming into you that I think, or someone, was once a page of cups. Now this can be, in modern day terms, um, the how are you text, the I miss you text, you know, those tiny weeny texts where you think, God, I've been thinking about this for ages, I've been hoping you get in touch, and then, when you do get in touch, it's three words. <laughs> One of them's a letter. How are you? Okay, I mean, anyone who texts that to a Virgo is, yeah, they're playing with fire, aren't they? Virgo likes grammar, syntax, and things to be correct. And I agree. Okay, Page of Cups, Knight of Cups, Queen of Cups. There's something here about feelings, relationships, possibly to do with a water sign person, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. <clears throat> it could also be as well to do with your career and where you are in life, where you feel you are in life. A lot of us have a kind of subconscious, well, I suppose you may have a five or 10 year plan, or even if you don't have Oh, I'm just checking my microphones there. Even if you don't have an explicit written down five or 10 year plan, you may have like in your head, you just, I should be, I don't know, married by this time, or I should be CEO by that time, or have my own business by this time, or in X, Y, Z, be happy by this time. It feels like you're able to make those leaps. Page of Cups, Knight of Cups, you've got your Queen of Cups, only thing we're missing here is the King of Cups. 
By the time you get to the King of Cups though, you've kind of got it sussed. So if you are considering lifestyle, you're considering how you earn money, where you live, there's a lot of prospecting here, okay? So consider the Page of Cups and the Knight of Cups prospecting and how you feel about it. And then here, we've got the Two of Wands. Now, if you look out for the Two of Wands, there is a merchant. He's got two wands plugged into the ground. He's got a globe in his hand. He's looking out over the horizon and he's thinking, where do I put down roots? Where do I invest? Where can I best do X, Y, and Z? These are the questions that I think are going through your mind in June. Where am I going to be? Maybe physically, you know, the world is opening up a bit for some people in some countries, or at least the possibility that we could kind of have prospects is starting to re-enter people's heads. We've got this merchant looking out and holding the ball and wondering what next? And then this is very fortuitous. We've got the three of wands, growth, creative growth, financial growth, life growth, and also something gathering momentum. So Virgo, if you're questioning, and Virgos don't often question, you know, if they've got a good secure job, they normally keep it. Um, but if you're just questioning how you earn your dollar, you know, if you're questioning why you're doing what you're doing, why you're living where you are, why you're investing in a certain person, a certain relationship. This is a theme. And I think you're going to find some answers here. And I think you might like the answers too. We also have the Seven of Pentacles, the workman leaning on his hoe and deciding, this is all the hard work I've put into this relationship, this job, this house, this garden, whatever it is. And I'm contemplating now what my next move is and whether it's worth it. Okay. Three major arcana in the reading, which are really interesting. One is you. This is the hermit and the hermit represents Virgo. There's something very singular about this hermit card. Of course, they're never with anyone else. You know, they're on their own. They are in the cave they um, settle down and they introvert for wisdom and they go within and you may be feeling or you may because of lockdown or whatever it is have spent an abundance of time alone and thinking you know and sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes it's not you know um, but it makes you rethink it makes you rethink everything you th rethink your relationships where you are in the world all of that stuff and then we have the emperor this is about somebody coming and taking control. Now it can be you. So for some of you, if you are in the kind of center of a what am I gonna do next, you might find that you step up and decide to start doing something about it. Probably not until after the end of June because Mercury is retrograde and it doesn't go direct until about the 20, oh, 21st, I think. And then it takes another few days for it to rev up properly. So really, Mercury's not direct till the beginning of July. So I wouldn't do, and it isn't a month for making sudden moves, but it is a month for planning them, and it is a month for networking. It's a month for getting to know what's out there, because also I feel for some of you that this Emperor card could be someone who's headhunting, a CEO, somebody of influence, somebody who can help you go from that page of cups to the knight of cups relationship wise i think you are testing i think you're testing the boundaries with somebody i think maybe somebody is testing the boundaries with you this could be somebody you've not seen too much of lately because they're not really turning up in the reading and when they don't turn up in the reading usually means that you're not necessarily in complete communication or there's been some kind of separation with this person. Not quite sure, okay, we'll dig into that. Now, we have temperance. 
Temperance reminds you to play with the energies that you've got. It will help you, Virgo, to be playful as far as you can. Playfulness is sometimes a challenge for Virgos um, and for everybody, to be honest, because Virgo is a sign of service and you normally have things quite well planned and you know what you're doing with things. The universe wants you to just relax a little, to enjoy yourself a little, to um, have a little bit of what you fancy, what you like, do something you like. <coughs> Excuse me. It feels, it feels quite spiritual. When you look at temperance and you look at the third eye, how it's lit up, whether this is to do with relationships or whether this is to do with destiny and work. And something's getting stuck in my throat, so there's something that needs to be said, I think. Access it in a playful way. Access it through dream time, through something spiritual, or just through being curious. Particularly as well, in relationships and in career, curiosity is really going to help getting to know what somebody does and why they do it, networking. You know, for example, instead of maybe just sending out your CV, looking on the area that you're interested of work, such as in LinkedIn or something like that, and just seeing what the chit chat is about it. What's the social stuff around it? Can you join in on any threads? Can you get involved in something? Because it feels like that would be the way in. There's somebody of influence out there that can really help you out in this regard and it would be good to link up with them. But I do feel it's in quite a non-conventional way, okay? Through friendship, through social connection. And again, if you're looking to meet somebody, you might meet somebody in this non-conventional, it's not, it is quite conventional these days rather than you know on a dating site or something like that which seems to be very normal now meeting somebody on a site that is a shared interest you know getting involved over here we've got the ace of pentacles and again this is about what is investable in my life who do i love who do i want to invest in who will invest in me Notice also you've got the Ten of Wands, so there are certain areas of your life where things are kind of full, they're kind of creaking at the seams and you're asking yourself, can I bear the brunt of this? Do I want to carry this? Do I want to carry this relationship? Do I want to carry this person? Do I want to carry this job? Maybe you're carrying some of your colleagues, you know, like you're doing the work of different people, all of that kind of thing. It feels like it's time to jettison some of the cargo so that you can do this, so that you can prospect, so that you can improve and you can decide where you want to be next. I think this is quite a crucial month for that, Virgo. In the extended reading, we're going to look at the other person in your romantic scenario because they are kind of markedly not present. And we're going to look at career, we're going to look at destiny, we're going to look at the best move, we're going to look at how the other person feels about you and any kind of secret, just secret blockages or things that you might not be aware of that you need to be aware of to move forward. Interesting. Wisdom of the Oracle card, you get why. Again, this person is curious as to why something happens. They're looking in the book and they're asking not what or when, but why. Why is such an open question? Why? You know, be curious, Virgo. Don't shut any of your options down in any department of your life. Be this Sagittarian energy. And remember as well, we've got that full moon in Sagittarius lunar eclipse on the 26th of May. That's what's taking us into the month of June. We have a solar eclipse on the 10th of June in Gemini, new moon solar eclipse. You will get the opportunity to put something out there again. 
but once again it doesn't need to be very formal if you do it on a curious friendship level from little acorns big oak trees will grow okay Virgo I'm gonna go do your extended reading and the link is in the description box so I'll see you on the other side or do like share and subscribe namaste